Hey everybody, I'm Victoria Shea with the Cleveland Stater, and today I am interviewing Gina Huffman, Assistant Admissions Director for Cleveland Marshall College of Law, and we are talking about navigating admissions at Cleveland Marshall College of Law. Um, in this podcast, Gina will explain the timeline, details, and decisions prospective students must make when applying to law school. So, with Gina being our ever amazing admissions director and assistant here, um, you deal a lot with applications yes. and helping students, prospective students, get ready to try and get into Cleveland Marshall, which yes. is an amazing law school. We have so many cool programs. Absolutely amazing, yes. So, why don't you start with that and just kind of give Cleveland Marshall a promo. I'd ask Dean Fisher to do it, but he's not around at the moment. Okay. So <laughs> you get Dean Fisher's 30 seconds of writing. Oh, well, <laughs> well. Um, as we sit here, I have um, just completed um, two meetings, actually, okay. with prospective applicants and their families. And one thing that I think is important is that um, Cleveland Marshall has a history of being called um, the School of Opportunity. Okay. And it's called the School of Opportunity because it was one of the first law schools to recognize that everyone could not just drop everything they were doing to go to law school. Okay. Um, so they started the first ever part-time program. Which breaks free of the traditional law school student where you drop everything for three years and go to law school. That's correct. And they had the foresight to understand that many more people wanted to have the opportunity to do that and they created that. Um, moving forward, they did other things like accept women, people of color. Um, these were noteworthy things that gave them that moniker of um, the School of Opportunity, which it is contemporary form is now um, our new model or our extended model I would say learn law live justice all right all right and that's and certainly so, what we're doing here at the, Cleveland Marshall that's right um, I could talk about the numerous programs that exist in terms of the academic support and the resources that are available to students the peer camaraderie that exists here which is the, one of the reasons I decided to come and work here because I believed in that. I thought it was awesome that, you know, in a law school culture, you could find uh, people that had close relationships and it was understood that we'd compete after we left. But while we're here, we're going to support each other and make sure that we're the best of our best selves before we leave here and then we would compete on the outside after that. So those are just a few highlights that I share with those um, families and candidates that came in um, okay. that I share with, you know, the Phi Alpha Delta pre-law students um, who are going on to um, possibly pursue that endeavor of law school and anyone who is looking to make a decision about um, what their next move is academically that will help them pursue and accomplish those things professionally that they're interested in because sometimes you may not know and so those are the highlights of CM Law. All right so <clears throat> you get a prospective student that comes into your office kind of like me mm -hmm. <laughs> who's interested in law school. Yes. Um, how would you advise them when do you know Tell us a little bit about that process. Well, um, I, I don't like it to be so formal that they won't really ask what they really, really want to know. And so I start out a lot of times by asking them about themselves, what they're majoring in and how they even came to this notion that they want to go to law school and what those things will translate into um, when you're putting your application together. So what is that going to look like um, when you write your personal statement based on what we've talked about and you know what are your recommenders gonna say about you um, in terms of why you will why you should earn a seat um, to come to the law school. Those are the kind of things that we talk about and then we get into the nitty-gritty of it. 
okay. um, which is um, what is really going to resonate um, with the faculty who are dis making these decisions. Um, also, uh, what is going to distinguish you from other candidates because that's, that's ultimately what's going to set you apart from all the other candidates and get the yes that you're looking for because you have put forth your uniquely branded self and you're going to be um, a great asset to the law school. I encourage students and applicants to go review the website, read the things that are posted on the website. Many law schools, including this one, talk about the kind of students that will be comfortable at this law school. And so here we're looking for leader lawyers. We're looking for people who have an interest in public outcomes. Um, that are beneficial to all. Uh, our model is learn law and live justice. That can be done in an advocacy fashion. That can be done in a litigation setting. That can be done, you know, in business if you want to pursue transactional law or some extension of it. And once you read those things, then it'll give you a better perspective of how you should be presenting yourself to the committee that's going to decide on your admissions. So those are some of the highlights that I cover. I know that it's really important to students who want to know, you know, how to get in law school in terms of grades and scores, mm -hmm. but I really want students to understand that um, putting forth your whole self is just as important. Because what if the grades that you have and the scores that you have may not be as competitive as you want or need them to be for admission and or scholarship. You better get yourself in here and come and talk about this so that we can talk about what um, your application will look like going forward so you present your best self and all of um, your merits, your accomplishments, and the things that you're capable of doing and adding value to uh, the ranks of this law school and becoming an alumni that go out there and do trailblazing things like many of our alumni have um, and being part of you know this law school. Okay. What is, so as a prospective student, I've come in, I've talked to you, I've decided I'm going forward. I'm going to put in my application. Tell us a little bit about like the timeline, you know, who I would submit the application to, and then kind of what to expect after that. So, um, timeline-wise, what what I inquire about is to to applicants um, is where you are academically. Okay. So, if you're a freshman, you know, I'm applauding you for window shopping. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm expressing to you that maybe you want to go take a look at an LSAT book just to know what's going on. Perhaps you want to take a philosophy course so that you can start to understand logic and reasoning. Um, I am, you know, encouraging you to maybe look at activities that you can participate in that will um, help you. Um, shine in extracurricular activities like volunteerism or Phi Alpha Delta, Delta. Pre-Law. So as a freshman I'm talking to you about those kinds of things, making sure that your grades stay competitive um, are, is the script for me for a freshman. For sophomore, more of the same, but it's getting a little serious. Okay. More serious. That makes sense. Yes. So, um, you know, in a lot of instances, by the, the spring semester of your sophomore year, you're scheduling classes for junior year. Um, your writing uh, courses are a little more intense. You want to make sure that you're getting good grades and really becoming proficient and very competent in your writing ability. And you want to start shaking some hands and networking. Um, you want to come and visit me. Um, I want to be able to have you 
perhaps meet some professors in the areas of law you might be interested in. So you can start to figure out if this is really what you want to do. Right. Junior year is getting hot. Mm. And it's time for you to sit in a class to really see if you can handle Socratic format. Okay? Because that's intense. You want to explain Socratic format just real quick? Well, the best listeners who don't know what it is. Well, the best well the best way I can explain Socratic method is that it's like a courtroom. So you'll be asked a question, you'll be expected to have the right answer and format it or uh, articulate it in the proper fashion. And if you get it wrong, you're going to get told it's wrong, and they'll move on to the next person. You may get scolded, like know your stuff the next time. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to handle that. Okay. Because in the real uh, world, in legal education, um, that's what's happening. Makes sense. Okay. Okay, so back to the junior timeline. Right. In junior year, um, you really want to uh, have a strong focus on LSAT because you want to get as, com as a competitive score as you can. The more competitive your score, the more opportunity you have for scholarship dollars. Okay, All right. I am going to be putting the class profile in front of you. The class profile is something that all law schools have. The class profile would include the uh, competitive GPA and the ch competitive LSAT scores at the 25 percentile level, the median and the 75 percentile level. So you have numbers now. You have numbers in terms of comparing what your GPA is to the numbers that the law school is expecting your GPA to be in. And you have numbers for the LSAT so you understand what your score needs to look like or be close to going into taking the LSAT. Um, and so those are some of the things that I talk about for juniors. For seniors, you better get in this office so we can talk about this application because it's all of those things from freshman year that we have to identify. The courses, mm -hmm. um, were you competitive, your writing ability, um, did you sit in a class, can you handle this, your LSAT test scores, um, your statement of purpose or your personal statement and writing that. What are you saying in these two pages, double space or one and a half space? Um, that are going to be meaningful, that are going to distinguish you from other candidates. Because seats are not unlimited in law school. There's right. a certain number of seats that get filled, and when they're filled, it's done. Okay? And so those are the things that I talk about in terms of that timeline for seniors. Um, for Cleveland Marshall, it's an annual fall admission. Okay. Um, so you want to kind of count backwards and say, okay, I got to, you know, if I'm in school, um, I got a year to get all of this done, or I got six months to get all of this done, you know, and that's what you want to focus on and make a calendar or a timeline to make sure you have enough study time or is deciding if that's realistic or not. I had someone come in today who was just like, I want to go in fall 2019, but I've not sat down and studied for the LSAT. What do you think? Well, I think you're going for it, yeah. you know, but whatever the score is, it's going to be reflected by right. that. And so you have to deal with that, you know. Um, I had another student who came in who said, I took some time off. And so they're going to have a whole different... Um, they're going to have a whole different menu of things to consider. There, there are things that they're concerned about are, you know, is it bad that I took a break? It's not bad that you took a break. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. If anything, you've gone and gained some work experience. And so you can tout your professional accomplishments along with all of the other things that the freshmen through the seniors have done. Um, and your recommendations may be uh, a high-level supervisor or something that can speak to the contributions you've made at that organization. Um, so those are the kind of things that um, I cover um, in terms of timeline and what you need to be doing depending on where you are. Um, 
to prepare for and make application to law school. Signing off for the last time for the Cleveland Stater and Cleveland State University, I'm Victoria Shea.